What up guys? Today we'll be looking at making these little ringy things. You can see just it's like rippling, it's coming out, it's awesome, and another kind of example is a little brighter. You can kind of control it. It's bouncing, bumping. And I realized that there was these little sparks coming through it where there's just yeah, that little bright spot right there. And I found out what that was for, so I'll show you how to make that not happen. Alright, um, well first I'll start off by saying this tutorial isn't really for making that effect, because it's kind of pointless. It's just more, just proof of concept here, just so you can uh, understand a little bit more about After Effects, how it works, and some other cool stuff you can do. So, um, just just a heads up. So I'll just make a comp, 720, make it... 24 frames a second, 8 seconds, why not? The number's annoying me. Alright, um, turn off that. Alright, so to make it this uh, looby thing, we're not. it's just going to be one line, really. So, one line going across. And, um, so we'll make a solid. And, uh, we want it to fit at least across. And to make my, uh, you know my whole school life before me seem actually worth it we're going to use math okay here we go all right uh we'll take uh 1280 oh it's making noises this is weird what kind of calculator is this 1280 times itself equals that plus 720 times itself equals whatever that is and then the square root of that 1468 so that's the number we'll use for the height 1468 and we'll make it just 10 pixels long and you can see if we oh let's change the color solid and we'll make it white now you see if we rotate it it fits perfectly along there! Yay! Math's fun! Hypotenuse! Yeah! Okay, now that I bored you, uh, <laughs> we're gonna want the... We don't need the whole length, we only need half of that, so... We can uh, go back into the layer, solid, and After Effects just loves math, so you can just type in divide by 2, and it'll do it. And now we need to move it back to where it was, but just half of it. So we need to move the anchor point to the bottom. And if you want to move it perfectly, you can just double click on it. And you can go to here, type in ruler. Um, zoom in. H, move it down. Let's find the bottom. Hit V. Get these little arrows at the top. You can bring it down and just match it up perfect to the side. You can see it goes it's 10 long, so half of that's 5. So, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, right there. Or you could just guesstimate, because I guess you'd have to zoom in more. Yeah, there we go. There's 5. All right, and then you can zoom back out, hit Y to move the get the pan behind tool, and you can just click on that, and it'll snap to the center of your markers. And if you want to get rid of a marker, you can just drag it off but who cares we know we can and we got the anchor point at the end we can uh we gotta move it back to the the center so we can go to p and um we need to go half of our comp size so the first one's x and y so uh our y our x is our width so it was uh what was our comp 1280 divided by 2 and 720 divided by 2 there now it's perfect and well, now when we rotate it it's dead center and we got our maximum length so no need to render anything more than what we need and we're going to spin this around and it will make this circle so what we're going to do is hit R and we're going to type an expression just all click on the watch and say uh, time times a ridiculous amount 
uh, 5,000. So now this thing is just, looks like it's three places at once, is moving hella fast. All right, so now we need to make it so it breaks this line up. Let's just go to a spot where it's yeah, close enough. Uh, or we break it up so, uh, I'll, I'll, you, you'll, you'll see it in a minute. <laughs> I don't feel like explaining right now. So we just go to uh, our effects and type in uh, grid. Scroll down, generate grid, and we'll make this red. And uh, let's see, we're going to make this width and height slider, so control both. And our width, we're going to crank that up. Our height, we're going to make it, these little brackets is what we're going to, how many lines we're going to have in our circle. So. Uh, that many about it's fine and we do not want this so we're at our uh, this little thingy right here we're gonna move this to the bottom corner and now we can adjust our side so we can make this a little thicker and we can space this out a little more as we want and let's crank this up a little bit more 2000 and now we're going to take this little thing and move it down here. Move it a little further. Who knows? At the, go to the beginning of the keyframe. Uh, click on the anchor. Just click on it. And then move somewhere in time. Maybe end your comp. And then move it over here. I don't know why it did that automatically, but that's awesome. So I'll just add another keyframe. Oh, okay. Oh, it's rotating. That's why it did that. All right. Um. So we should probably have pre-composed it first before we did the rotation. So shift, click R, and we'll all click on it to get rid of it. And now we'll go to the anchor, and then we'll move it somewhere ridiculous over here. So now, um. Now you can see it's moving and that'll give us our little bouncy effect. And you could do it the opposite way. Whatever. I don't care. Alright, uh, <laughs> now we're gonna pre-compose it. Move it, make sure it's at the for for this uh, corner right here. So we have them wherever it spins. If you do it here, it's gonna get cut off at the edges. So then we'll call it uh I don't know, line. And now we'll go R all click time times 5,000 so now we'll still do our same effect of rotating all right now we want the circle thing to happen and we're gonna do this by since we're moving the comp so fast we can do this by motion blur so we can toggle the switch click this little motion blur switch and then if we want to see it in the comp you can click on this and you can see nothing's there and you see absolutely nothing and I actually think it has the settings that I want already so I'm gonna turn those back to default it does so you can see we got this little circle right there it's just not bright enough so we're gonna add a glow and make it a little bit brighter so I glow to this and you can see it got a little bit brighter, but not by much. We can turn up the intensity. But we're really not seeing much data in here. That's because we're at a, we're only at a 8 bits per channel. If we turn we go to a 30 bit 32 bit float just by all clicking on this number, it's allowing a lot more color. And you can see we got this fading little sound wave thing. If that's what you're going for, that's fine. And we can go in here. We can even, uh, if we want to see it more, we can duplicate the glow. Now we can see it. And you can see it's moving, but it's only moving in that portion. We want to complete it. And how that works is just like a camera for the shutter angle. A normal one would be at uh, 180 degrees, or if you're on like a 70, it works by speed, and it'd be like 4,000 is like 130th of a second, but whatever. 
uh, we want it all, either all the way up, no, all the way down, so we get as much light as coming in, like more exposure. So that way you will, by basically hiring the shutter angle here, even if we can go past 360, which isn't really uh, possible, but in the digital world we can do this. So we can make, if we go to comp settings, advanced, it's just easier to show you. If we turn this down, shutter angle, it's going to make this smaller. So we're going to turn this up until it meets. And right, you can see right there, it's overlapping. So it's just while it spins, it's getting more time to bring all that. It's capturing that whole circle into one, like one shot, because it's moving so fast. That's basically what the angle, shutter angle does. It's uh, 622, I know works. Perfect. And uh, that, I don't really know what does, it, but that's fine. So now you can see, now we got that. moving like that. It's moving fast and it's capturing like the whole circle phase into one you know image. It'd be easier talking about film because you know how that works but I don't feel like explaining it. Uh, good enough. So that's how I made that and it's pulsing because of the um, if we go back into the comp because of our grid now our uh, anchor is moving we turned it off it would just be a constant circle of multiple lines and you could adjust all these uh, you could um, you could also do it by the height too I think that would give you the exact same effect if you animated that so if we do if we move this down we can see if we go to we'll have a bunch more circles and you can see when we get this bright hot flash like I showed you at the beginning like right there these streaks is because the there's a line coming in through here uh, from the width. So we turn this up to like four thousand. I think that's as high as it goes. The odds of it coming in are ridiculous. So it'll it'll never that flash will never show up. And yeah, so yeah, it's gone. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I don't. It was just more of just showing you cool things After Effects can do and how it works like a it can work like a real camera especially if you add a camera but just cool stuff and I think that's all I have for you so I will see you guys later and yeah peace